Hey there, this is Francoise and today we're going to be painting a watercolor galaxy and we're going to add a watercolor bat in the foreground and add a few easy special effects to make it look Halloween worthy. So this tutorial is step by step and I'm going to break down each step that will help you get the painting done and if you're a beginner at watercolor, go ahead and give it a shot because the techniques I'm going to demonstrate today are completely beginner friendly. And by the end of the video, you will know exactly how to paint a cool background, how to add stars, and how to draw anything you like with watercolor so you can start creating watercolor cards of your own. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to get some watercolor paper and anything similar to masking tape. What I'm using is Arches cold pressed watercolor paper, but anything you prefer using is going to be fine. If you're having trouble with watercolor, try and switch for another type of paper preferably 100% cotton paper like the one I'm using if you can. Okay, so I taped a 5x7 piece of paper onto my cutting board to keep the paper from moving around as I paint and also create those cool sharp edges. I'm using Saturday watercolors and a few Windsor & Newton pans as well and I'm going to make washes of a light yellow, a darker one, a bright orange, a light red and a dark red. And of course, you don't have to use the same exact colors. Whatever colors you like are going to be fine, as long as they look nice together, and as long as you make sure to have some light, average, and dark tones to create contrast with the painting. So my washes are fairly diluted with water, and I mean by that that they're pretty runny. It's going to be useful for the first layer we will apply to the background, and as we go, we will make those washes a bit more saturated by adding some paint to the mix. So next, we're going to tackle the background, and that's the first step in the painting. I'm using a round brush by Raphael. This one is a big size that I use a lot for large surfaces because it's more convenient, but a smaller brush can do too. So what I'm going to do first is apply water to the paper, and since mine is a bit textured, I make sure to go over the same spots several times. Your paper is wet enough when you can tell from the shine, it's wet enough that it's going to dry within the next couple of minutes and not immediately. However, there shouldn't be any puddles on there, so it's important to take the time to wet it all over without going overboard with it either. Now I'm going to start dropping my colors and I'm going to do three layers to create depth and also get brighter colors in the end since watercolor fades when it dries. So I dropped my colors starting with the lighter ones and I ended with the darker ones. I did not think about where exactly I should drop this or that color, I just had fun with it and really did whatever I felt like at the moment. The only thing you may want to think about though is to keep some areas very light, preferably in the middle of the painting and keeping the darker colors for the edges of the painting. And this is because I'm trying to get the focus in the center of the paper, but that again would depend on what you want to do. If it's just a standard galaxy, it's not going to matter where you create those lighter areas, even though they're usually in the center. So I applied my first layer, I used a heat gun to dry it faster, and as you can see, it loses its brightness when it's dry. And this is why I'm going for a second layer, and this time, I'll just add a bit of paint to each of my wash to make them a bit less runny, because I want the colors this time to be even more intense when they dry. So I do this, let it dry, or use a heat gun or a hair dryer, and then I apply a third layer. Same thing again, I make those washes a bit more saturated, and you can see that as it dries, it is now really, really bright and interesting compared to the way the first layer looked like. So now the second step of this watercolor painting here is to add some stars. I'm using some gouache and an old synthetic brush that I find convenient for the job because the hair is really firm. And the key to make those stars is to dilute the gouache enough that you will easily be able to make splatters when you rub your finger to the brush. And also, try to vary how much water you add to the paint since less water means smaller splatters and more water means bigger drops. There's also the pressure you apply when rubbing the brush with your finger, how far you are from the sheet, and the direction you're going in. So try and vary all those metrics, play around with them to create an even stars. And if you're in a hurry like me, you can use a hairdryer again because now we're going to draw the branches and the watercolor bats. That's the third step, and I'm using a neutral tint shade by Windsor & Newton, but anything dark and opaque will work. The paint needs to be a bit diluted, but not too much, and your wash shouldn't be runny. It should feel more a creamy type wash. With the type of brush I used for the background, only this one is a bit smaller, 
I'm tracing the branches. I didn't really draw them ahead of time and I encourage you to just let loose with it and just paint them from scratch. For the bat, I did use a pencil to draw it because it needs to be really resemblant and if you're having trouble with it, feel free to download the template in the description of this video. You can print it out and use transfer paper to put on your painting. It will help get that out of the way. Sometimes the gouache shows through the dark paint, so go ahead and add another layer to mask it. I actually tried doing the stars after the tree and bat to avoid the gouache showing through, but it wasn't convenient at all. So in the end, I think it's just better and a lot less hassle this way, and plus it doesn't show that much. The fourth step, and I had a blast with this one because I was trying to make my bat creepy and I'm happy with the ghostly look I gave it, is to splatter some of that dark paint the same way we did with the gouache. So for that, a toothbrush or synthetic brush is better if you have that. If you look closely at what I'm doing, I made more splatters towards the bat and less as I was moving away from it because I really wanted to make it look like it's forming from those tiny dark pieces. I don't know if they're supposed to be bugs or some creepy devilish bits, but I've seen that kind of special effect in horror movies or TV shows before. So maybe you know what I mean, I don't know. So the fifth step is to make the eyes for the bat now. And I used some gouache and a really tiny brush for that, but a gel pen would be just as good. Talking about gel pens, I used my white one. It's a Uniball Signal gel pen to add some stars to the background and complete the painting. And a tip here for better stars is to make the lines pretty irregular and also vary their size. Well, we're done with the watercolor Halloween galaxy, so if you like this Halloween watercolor painting step-by-step -step tutorial, let me know in the comments below, give this video a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And also, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell to know of my upcoming watercolor cards. See you next time!